All right. All Welcome. Right. Welcome back. The concession tapes. We, always we never introduce ourselves. We never do. Why? We? I Kim. I Vanessa. All right, that's who we are today. Um, yeah, today we are doing the movie. Taxi driver. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, what are you doing? Last here? minute decision right there. Yeah, it really was. I hadn't thought about it yet. Yeah, so we finished this movie literally an hour ago, both of us. That's the yeah. same time. Just about an hour ago. Uh, this is my first time watching it, Gustavo. This is... I watched it before, but I didn't remember a lot of it. Mm. Like, I thought he died. I think he does. Okay, please. Okay. Because I, I thought he died, and then I saw it. Like, I thought that's where the movie ended, rather. Let's say yeah. that. And then he 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 was obviously the next scene he was alive and uh-huh. the, you could tell the scar here yeah. I don't know if you saw that where he got shot in the neck yeah and so I was like okay 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 so he is alive that, that's a good point the scar in the neck uh, yeah but th- there is something that homegirl said at the beginning whenever he was going on a date with Betsy what is he he she said something like oh some is fact some is fiction it's a contradiction. Oh, you're so right. That is very true. And so that kind of like, yeah, that kind of like made me think. And then also like the letter from uh, Iris's parents. By the way, did you see the people in the in the picture? Yeah, those are Martin Scorsese's parents. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. oh, that's so cool. Yeah, he always has them in their films, and he the 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 dad is in the film. Who is he? Uh, he's he's like an extra. Oh, okay. But there's a shot where I don't. I think he's sitting in the cafe or something. Yeah. And you could see Robert De Niro, and on the left, it's uh-huh. it's, Robert, it's uh, Martin Scorsese's dad. Well, remember when we shot uh the short film, the uh, coexist? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Kim was supposed to be in that, right? Oh yeah. And I always see. told Kim that I'm gonna put her in every one of my films. I think you should. As an extra, mm-hmm. like somebody just running with their dog. So I wanted I wanted Kim and Moxie to both be in every single one of my films, yeah. right? Uh, and she was supposed to be in this one, but there was like no time for us to do it. And so she always brings it up. She was like, I was supposed to be in that, but you, you never mm, put me on there. And did. so like now the next film that we shoot, I, I have to put her on. Yeah, sure. that, that shit, I'm down for that. Yeah. But, uh, but that's really cool. I didn't know that his parents were in. Yeah. His parents are always in there. Yeah. He's always in there. And also Martin Scorsese is obviously he's in it. Yeah. And, uh, did you see him in the beginning though? I don't think so. Where? When the girl gets introduced, uh-huh. he's the guy sitting, and then he, when she passes by, he's he's like looks over. He's oh like, really? Yeah, yeah, that's him. Damn, bro. Who I watched a film. I want to know. I think. And sorry, this this can be cut for for the next episode, but I think in everywhere, everything, everything everywhere all at once. I think one of the directors is in the in the movie too. Is he? I think that's kind of strange because I think the Russo brothers produced that. Uh huh. That that movie, I think I saw that they were one of the producers. Oh, really? I think so. I think when I finished it, I saw the Russo brothers on there. And you know, the Russo brothers direct Avengers, and one of them is always on on camera. One of them is always he has a line. He's not like an extra or anything. He actually has lines. In the film. Let me see if, if that was actually him or if he just looked like him. Yes. Daniel Shiner. Yeah, they, they call them the Daniels because they're not related, but they're both called Daniel. Yeah, they're both. <laughs> the first name is both Daniel. Yeah. But I think Daniel, one of them, was the guy that was like really into like the Kinks. Oh, that's him. I think so. Oh my god, I don't. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. The guy that came out the room that was being yeah. nominated or whatever. If it's not him, he looks a lot like him. It was that him. I think that is him. Yeah. I think that is him. I think it is him, too. I don't think the other one was in there. Probably not. Same thing with the Russo brothers. There's always one in there and one there's not. Daniel Kwan, does he look familiar in the movie? No, right? He looks familiar because I just saw like the movie. So like, I saw like videos and like, he just like won Oscars and all yeah. that stuff. So, but I don't know if he's familiar. I don't know. I'd have to, I guess, go back and pay attention more on that. Damn, I really want to know. I can't, I can't figure it out, but I really want to know if he's in there. How would you even figure it out? I'm I'm looking at IMDb. Um, I'd go to his IMDb. I am. And then try to see if there's like they go to all his film, his filmography. See if there's like a credit known And there for should it. be a credit for actor. And okay. If, yeah. Filmography actor. Yeah. District manager. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah That's he, him he then. He's a district manager. He also plays uh Dick Long in The Death of Dick Long. 
anyway, just thought that was interesting. But uh, yeah, in, in the letter that the parents, Iris's parents wrote to, supposedly wrote to him, yeah. it kind of sounded a lot like what he was writing before. Yeah, it's, even it's, in the way he read it, yes. right? Yeah, and so like- mm, That's a good point. That was there, and then like, him uh, rejecting Betsy at the end is kind of like, I don't know. It, it it sounded like something that he would make up in his yeah, mind. Yeah, something cool, right? Because yeah. that should be cool. Uh -huh, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I... And, and kind of like that shot at the end where after he does a thing and it goes like that overhead view, it kind of like seems like you're looking down at them, right? And like, Almost like from heaven or whatever. Ah, good point. And so, like, I really, I really do think that he died, and all of that. I think you're right. That epilogue afterwards is like something that was like in his head or something. Yeah, I, th I think you're totally right. See, that's the thing about film that, like, I don't, I, I, this is why, this is why we're so good when we do this because I, you notice shit, um, because the director tells a story visually, mm -hmm. and I usually notice more actor stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or like sometimes writing stuff, mm -hmm. but sometimes the writing changes. When the director adds something like that, it's like, why did he shoot from above? It's like, oh, well, maybe he died. Mm -hmm. It's like, that makes fucking total sense. Yeah. Like, I had never thought about that. Uh, yeah, so, but, but but what I did mean was that I thought the movie ended when he, like, did the whole gun thing. Yeah. But, yes, I also kind of thought, I'm like, I don't know if this is real or not. Uh -huh. I can't really pinpoint why, but I think it was the Betsy thing more than it was the, I didn't, I didn't even think about the, like, I didn't notice it that the parent or the dad was in the, in the note. Uh-huh. He was reading this the because it wasn't it wasn't Robert De Niro reading it, Travis. It wasn't Travis reading it. It was like it was kind of like it a, was another actor think, reading, yeah, it, uh, which is plays the dad of Jodie Foster. To to to, to think that's Jodie Foster is still crazy. So wild. I did so, not even pick it up yeah. until they were in the room together. In the room together. Like whenever like he ran into her like a couple of times. Yeah. Before he, she was in the cab, and then he almost hit her with the cab and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I did not pick up that was Jodie Foster. You did. It oh, wasn't until I saw like, her face, like her side profile, I was yeah. like, "Is that young Jodie yeah. Foster?" Oh, when she was holding the guy. Uh no, before that. Okay, before that, because so I knew it was Jodie Foster in there, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Oh yeah, that is Jodie Foster." Yeah. Um, but before I even watched the movie the first time, which was uh -huh. years ago, like I knew that was Jodie Foster because she people always talk about how that was her first huge role. Oh, okay. You know, like that's what hit her, her yeah. career, and I'm just like, okay. Cool, and it's it's a crazy role to play as a yeah. as a young child. It's kind of like in the um, Leon the Professional, and mm -hmm. that's such a great movie. We didn't do that. Yeah. Um, Who but, was the actress in that? Uh, oh my God, uh, I'm thinking Black Swan. What's her fucking name? Jesus Christ. Plays oh Black. Oh my God. I know. I'm. Just... I'm. I know her name. I know her name. Um. Wow. It's it's gonna come to me. It's gonna come to me. Why are we like this? I don't know, but I do. <laughs> I do know her name is a thing, and I, for the life of me, cannot remember her name right now. Um, Natalie Portman. Woo! Uh, you got it, uh, Natalie Portman. Jesus Christ! I yeah. went to like all her movies, like Jackie or, and stuff. In that Jodie Foster movie, Panic Room, I was like uh, Kristen Stewart's first role, and it was one of those things again. Where it's like she looks so young that you never pick up that it's Kristen Stewart until you rewatch yeah, it. Like, you rewatch it. Is that, is that Kristen Stewart? Yeah, is, like, that, that makes that's, sense. That's a young little girl. Yeah, because even Jodie Foster, when I watched it again, like, even though I knew that was Jodie Foster, I'm like, that doesn't even look like Jodie yeah. Foster. But then when she held the guy, her profile was such Jodie Foster. I'm like, her the nose. I don't know. It's like her eyes and nose. Uh, like, yeah. it was like in her profile, it looks just like yeah. her now. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of weird, but. Um, but anyway, I, I actually didn't know that. Like, I think that's one of the things I didn't know before mm -hmm. even watching it the first time. Yeah. But where was I with the... Where are we going with this? Before all that. We were talking about uh, the the letter. And the, wow. <laughs> I guess we lost our train. And the time. actor being... Oh, well, anyways, but back to the letter thing. Uh, it was mostly... Uh, oh, yes, the actor reading. When he read that, he read it in the way Travis would read it. Yeah. with the pauses and i was like that's kind of weird uh -huh. I'm like why would he read it that way because like when you write something at that point that person just reads it the way they they would read it right um but then also the betsy thing i did find that very strange too i was like i don't i think in, the, in like in my mind i was like i think he probably died mm -hmm. um 
because that Bessie thing is weird. It's like, why wouldn't he? T- he was so infatuated with her, right? And uh, but it's it's again, it's that he wanted to be a hero. Yeah, he wanted to be a hero so bad. That's who he wanted to be. That's exactly who he wanted to be. Yeah. And you know, he tried. He tried to be the villain, and it didn't work out. Mm-hmm. He tried to kill the politician, mm-hmm. and then he ran shit scared because. I really don't know what point he was trying to make with that. I think he was just trying to just be somebody, yeah. you know? But then he realized, like, let's just, you know, let's just save the girl or whatever, mm-hmm. um, which which he did. Or I guess we we think we think he did. I hope he did. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, we don't really know what happened to her yeah. in that sense. Like, if we go based off of the ending of it, yes, we know that she went uh-huh. back to her parents. But that's probably a, a, something that he thought about when he was dying mm-hmm. or what he imagined or whatever the case may be. So it's it's an interesting movie and I I think I like it more than I watched it the first time because it's also so relevant to like what's going on in today's world mm-hmm. where like there's a lot of like lonely men out there and like, dude, Martin Sc- this is how you know you're great. When you when you write something that's before it's time. Mm-hmm. Cause this- and maybe back then it was still like relevant because like New York wasn't like, Glitz and glamour. Oh no! All the time, you know, it was like dirty. It was, oh, it's it's never. Oh, that's been. another thing. When he's driving Betsy, the the streets are all clean. I didn't notice that. The streets are immaculate. God, Mars Scorsese is so good. Yeah. God damn it, man. Yeah. And so, like, that's uh-huh. another. That's another. Like him, or like him not him being dead because yeah. that was his dream for the the streets to be clean and not busy and nothing. And it was perfect. Everything was so perfect. God. And she was wearing white and like all this other stuff. It was just, yeah. So yeah. it's like he I wanted think he her. died. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think he I think he did die. Now, like with all the things that you're telling me now. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like I wasn't sure. Like I mm-hmm. thought he did, but I was like, maybe that's an yeah. interpretation thing. But I think it is left up to interpretation. I but think, there's yeah, enough yeah. hints for but you. But there's enough hints to yeah, to think yeah. like, yeah, he did he did die. This is like the story that he this is how he wanted to end it. Yeah. You know? Uh, but it's crazy because like he goes back to being a taxi driver, yeah, you know, and that thing. But I don't know. I guess he did want her to come back to him at some, and then yeah. him reject her, uh-huh. you know, to not have to go to that rejection. But but it is sad because like it, like the movie he invited her to is like he's just why? has he has <laughs> just point of reference to yeah. I mean, why? Of course, but like I guess him being a guy and being such a guy. I guess with other guys in, in the he's so naive is the mm-hmm. thing. It's, he's not like a he's not perverted or anything. He's just naive. Yeah. And, and like because even him watching the film is just like oh these are movies, but it's because he never even listens to the radio or mm-hmm. nothing. Like the radio's never on in the taxi. No. So how is he gonna get any sort of any? He's always been alone. He always talks about that. He's like I was I was I was always alone whether it was in the taxi or it was at the movies or mm-hmm. remember, he says that he actually mm-hmm. says that so. It's just it's just sad to watch somebody that lonely, not know what the world is about, how to treat a, a lady, how to how to treat anybody, you know? Cause he had her. He did have her. Uh, man, I love. I also love that scene too. Uh, and that when he like confronts her for the first time, and he's all like, she just did that so. She just captivates you in yeah. her performance, you know, and like she brings you in, like she's like, oh god, like she's like totally bringing Robert De Niro in, uh-huh. you know, so. But yeah, it is. It is just going back to that. It is such a relevant movie today, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, not to women, I, I don't think. Uh, well, maybe like with the Betsy thing. Mm-hmm. Like I think it is relevant in that way. But I feel maybe more to men because yeah. the protagonist is Robert De Niro, right? And it follows him. So. Talking to me. Talking to me. I'm the only one here. I'm the only one here. You must be talking to me. You talking. <laughs> it takes so much yeah, yeah. for that gun to come out. I know. It, does, it, does. <laughs> it, it takes a while. Like, it's not like an instant thing, you know? It's, yeah, I know. Like, but... Django, that one was a good mechanism. Like, oh, you want me to shake your hand? Are you sure you want me to shake your hand? All right. And then he just... Back to Taxi Driver. Back to Taxi Driver. Uh, but, yeah, that mechanism, to me, when I saw that mechanism, um, he was making it. Like, I don't know why I pictured Martin Scorsese just finding some random dude in New York. It's like, I, I, I need this. I need this. Like, yeah. this is what I need. Like, I need to make a mechanism that comes out through here. So it's like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I was like, I could just see him because he's such a, he's so meticulous with his things. Uh-huh. And like, I just know, like, he like, it's like, regardless of what it costs, like, I need, I need that. Yeah. Like, that's, that's a big part of the movie yeah. uh, for him. So, yeah. and he's so jittery, you know? He it's, is, yeah. He's and, like on fucking 
You think he's ever done cocaine? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> By the way, I don't know if you knew this, but this movie almost didn't get like put in theaters. Why? I think it's this one. What other movies has Martin Scorsese done? Old movies? I can't tell you his old movies. Like, what other movies are he fa- is, he, is he famous for? Just like Goodfellas. He's famous for Taxi Driver. I mean, new ones. Are- Island. I've never seen that. Okay, so it, then it, it was this one. I'm sure it was. Anyways, uh, there was just so much blood in it in that last scene that they were going to rate it. Uh, they were not going to rate it in R. They were just going to rate it like a... Like a mature or whatever? Yeah, yeah, like like what they rate porn films at, I mm-hmm. guess. Because um, I think he said that in the interview. And so, like, he said he, he thought about killing... There's a story where he thought about killing somebody. Like, uh, going up there in the... St- like, doing what the fucking... What his character did. Uh-huh. Basically, it's like, how are you not going to fucking post my movie? Yeah. And, like, I think a couple of buddies had to go over and over. Because he was, like, up all night with a gun in his hand. Uh-huh. Like, he was going to go and shoot the producer. Or shoot, not the producer. The, yeah. No. No, he was. Like, this is, like, I know. He was crazy about it. He's like, how are you not going to rate it? Cause like, he, just give it a rated, like, rated R. Like, you know, that's what it's supposed to be. And they would not. They were just like, we are not going to do it because of the blood. So, you know what he did? Rather than kill somebody... Um, I think he caught somebody. Either he caught somebody or somebody talked him out of that whole shit and then it made him think, like, oh, you know what I could do? He desaturated the blood. Okay. And that gave it the R rating that it needed. It looked like chocolate. It gave it the R rated that it needed. Yeah, that's why it was so dark. Ain't that crazy? Yeah. That's, that's a, when I found that, I was like, that's crazy. I need to show you that interview. Because he was. Like, if you look at his eyes, he was going to shoot that guy. Yeah. That's how passionate he is about his fucking Have you seen shit. his master class? No, I haven't. Oh, you should. Yeah, I, wa- I actually watched or started watching. Oh, no, this was his writer class. Um, Spike. Spike Lee. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, how he, his writing process. and Yeah. Yeah, but I have not watched Martin's. But that, he is more directing. Yeah, yeah. Or but it, he it's is still, directing. It's still good to know. No, it is very that. good to know. But at the time, I wasn't necessarily interested in directing. I was interested in writing. So yeah. I liked that, like, who the writers were on there. Mm-hmm. And Spike Lee was on there. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, back to the, back yeah, to, yeah, back to this. Back to this. I really like this movie. I mean, I, I didn't know what I was expecting. Like I said, it's, it's been on my list for like a long, long time. Yeah, but I never just got like around to it. Mm-hmm. But I, I really liked it, and I think I don't know. It just, it's so it's, good. It's a good time. You it's know what I mean? But like, not a good, not a good time. Like, like you're like happy, but it's just like a good time. Like it just keeps you. Like on your toes, like everything like works really well together too. Yeah, I mean like it's it's music like it's very like classical music, mm-hmm. you know. Whenever there's like montage scenes, you just it's like for me, it's such a great balance between like what Hollywood is looking for mm-hmm. and like the and not like giving into Hollywood, but like going more into your artistic side. Yeah, um, he has that quality about him because mm-hmm. I think the best movies are always right in between. It's just like, I, I talked to this to Vanessa, like the best artists for me are always right in between. Uh-huh. Like they're not so much in the music industry, but they're not so much towards the artists. Cause like mm-hmm. there's artists that we love or that we've heard before. Did you say music industry? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So like there's artists that we've ever heard before um, that are more towards the artistic side uh-huh. and then don't explore. Okay. Well, I'm trying to think of somebody like, like uh, Keaton Henson. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Amazing. But he doesn't ever gear towards the music industry. industry. So, like, it's it's a fault in that because, like, you have to find, like, a balance, right? Mm-hmm. But if you look at, like, now, like, Bad Bunny, like, he's all music industry. Uh-huh. And so his music lacks. Like, yeah. it's all hype, but there's nothing really s- mm-hmm. with substance. And for me, the person, for me, the best person right now is, like, Rosalia because mm-hmm. she's right in between. Mm-hmm. Like, she does gear towards the music industry. She's very marketable. She does all that stuff. But if you listen to her music, like, she still has, she does pop, but she still has that essence of her, like, Flor Clorico that, is it Flor Clorico? There goes that fucking, um, uh, it's, uh, she's from Spain. What's the Spain music? España. 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 What are you uh, talking about? It's not Flor Clorico. The, the main music in Spain, what is it? It's, maybe it is. I don't, I don't think it is, but, um. It kind of reminds you of like how Billie Eilish. I think I think she does exactly. Billie Eilish stuff. is perfect that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She gives like the poppy songs. Exactly, but, but she doesn't like it. Doesn't lack yeah. true like you your deep cuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, exactly. Dude, really deep cuts. Deep, you know. So like that's what I mean. And I think Martin does that very well in this film. Mm-hmm. Like I think still this film is a little bit geared towards like, um, like the artistic side of like mm-hmm. 
the movie, but like I think it's just in him. Like this is his film. Like it's like he's gearing towards one side or the other. Mm -hmm. He's just making a film that he wants to make. But yeah. I think it fits a perfect balance between there. And I think that's why he's been so good. And like he's a fucking legend. And Steven Spielberg, I think, leans a little bit more towards Hollywood. Hollywood. Oh, a lot more towards Hollywood. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, he still has great movies and that's why he's been a great director. And you know, has he won yeah. Oscars? Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. I and feel like, like like Steven Spielberg is Hollywood. Like I feel yeah, like yeah, yeah, you're you right. think of Hollywood and you think of like movies like uh like uh he did Jurassic Park and shit, right? He did Jurassic Park, he did Jaws. Yeah. Yeah. Like you think of those kind of like movies. Yeah, movie buff movies that are yeah. always like you have the Ghostbusters, yeah, all that yeah, stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so then you have like it's like him and James Cameron are like the ones that make those a Hollywood yeah. fucking block the world. They can do anything that they want. Yeah. Because whatever movie they can Exactly, from, but success. he still does it so well and there's still so much artistic view in his movies that even the artists Oh, yeah, that yeah, watch yeah. that you know what i'm saying like yeah. oh that's master class so just uh -huh. just watch the film it's a master class yeah and so that's what i mean but like he's yes versus like um spielberg is more on the hollywood side mm -hmm. scorsese is more on the artistic yeah, side. yeah and i loved it you know i wanted to i switched up this movie like last minute yeah. and i usually don't switch up my movies no but i and i was thinking of doing joker but then well, i thought psych but then I, just, I said psych, and then I did this movie. But it's it's funny because... They're kind of the same. They're just, so, yeah, Joker was inspired. A lot of the things that were inspired by it was Taxi Driver. Uh -huh. Like, uh, Todd Phillips talks about it. It's like, I went and watched Taxi Driver. Yeah. And I wanted... And the same colors. Like, you see a lot of the yeah. same colors in there. And I'm like, that, yeah. that would That's a good point. I, I didn't... But once you said psych and we're not doing Joker, I was like, all right, cool, whatever. And I got it out of my mind. But now that you're bringing it up, yeah. It is kind of like the same movie, just done... Mm -hmm. Recently, and with a character that everybody knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, it's it's. I mean, there's a lot of inspiration. I mean, the story mm -hmm. changes. There's a difference. Yeah, right? but like you could see you the can influence. See Taxi Driver going into the direction. Of oh the Joker, yeah, it's or you can see Joker going in the direction of Taxi Driver. You know exactly, I mean? it's very heavily influenced. Like yeah. Joker's influenced by obviously Taxi Driver, and it goes to show like. I think now, like, there's more of Joker movies. Like, there's more stuff. Of, like, back in the day, there was, like, only a few directors. Now there's a yeah. whole bunch of directors doing all these things. I mean, we've reviewed a lot of movies that, like, you know, like, even the ones that we did with The Menu and mm -hmm. um, The Killing of the Sacred Deer. Mm -hmm. You know, like, those movies have that same kind of feeling to it. Mm -hmm. And so back in the day, it wasn't like that. But, you know, uh, you're like, oh, my God, I love these new movies. They're modern. Like, that's cool. I love that take, like, the Jokers. But they're influenced by movies that were, like, Back in the day, you yeah. know, if you just really just go back and like watch the Martin Scorsese movies, Goodfellas, I watched also not too long ago, it was really good, but not like Taxi Driver, it's totally different. But, um, but, but yeah, it's very influenced and I just love it. Like, I love this, I love this film. Um, it's like something I can't necessarily relate to as much as not that I could relate to Joker, but I think uh, obviously like Joker came out during my time, and uh huh. All that stuff, but like I could see why people always hold Taxi Driver as like. Oh yeah, no, I think that this is one of those movies that like you can watch it. It is kind of like timeless in a sense. Yeah. Well, you can watch it now. You can watch it twenty years from now. Mm -hmm. It'll still resonate, you know. And like nothing ages it really. Like nothing. No, nothing. Like makes the story not uh, relevant, I guess. Yeah. And so. It's, it's, I don't know. I feel like it is timeless in, the, in that sense. And I really like that. I really like, I, 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 I agree with you with that it influenced, a lot of movies are influenced by movies back in the day. And like, this is one of those. Yeah, this is one of those movies that like directors always, you know, especially if you're shooting in New York, mm -hmm. are you doing like a, like a, like that time period piece? Yeah. Like they go, I just know that they go back to Taxi Driver. Yeah. Cause like, in that, cause like, you know, they're not costumes is a thing. You know, when you do like, when you watch, a Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, like the stuff that they're wearing, it's like in the 60s, I think, right? Mm -hmm. And like, it's very hip, they're wearing like all this like flowy shit, you know? They're all costumes and like the actors, you know? But like, I was watching like, especially when they were in like the um, the office, when they were in the politics or whatever, mm -hmm. and the politicians the like campaign. campaigning, thank you, thank you. And uh, that guy with the curly hair, he like, yeah. what is it called? It's, it's a- uh, Firm? The perm, thank you. I told Kim, I was like, I want to get one of those. <laughs> you should just to try it once in your life. But apparently it takes a while to like yeah, get it out. Anyways, he had a perm. And then just like the the, the way that the tuxedo was, or the uh, suit was tailored. And I'm just like, that's not a costume. 
Yeah. That's like how how life was yeah. when yeah. they were there. So it's just like that's cool, you know. Uh-huh. Like that was their time period. Mm-hmm. Like when people went in there and watched that movie. Like the only crazy thing about watching that movie was just the story mm-hmm. and like understanding like Travis and his character. Um, how can a man go through that or do that, you know? But but everything else around it was just normal. Yeah, it's so, like like I said, like it's just one of those things that like yeah, you have to like go back to that time but like it's yeah. not like things like the costumes are the only things that like really make a difference you can make the same movie today and make him an uber driver and it'll be like the same i thought about thing. that you know what i mean yeah i thought about that i'm just like how many people make an uber well, driver? if you think about it like if you think about it like when, whenever you were talking about like how old movies um influence nowadays like i mean yeah like that's every movie is kind of like a repeat of the same shit that happened like Decades and decades yeah, ago, yeah, yeah. you know? Like, you got movies like Mission Impossible. They copy, like, stuff like uh, North by Northwest. Have you ever seen that movie? I've never seen that movie, no. Fucking good movie. You know what I mean? But, like, they, Isn't it like it's, po- it's one of those action movies yeah. that back in the day, and, like, it's you got this, like, suave guy. Same yeah. thing with, like, 007. That's or, what they say, yeah, like the Bond movie. Yeah. Like that. And so, like, yeah, shit just repeats. So it's just, it does. Just like a successful movie from back in the day. Let's just make it now. Yeah, <laughs> and it, just put our own spin to it. But do you? Feel, I know, but like, yeah, I guess, I guess, I guess you are right. But it just feels like, and it goes back before even that. Like, they copy Shakespeare plays, right? Oh, hundred percent. And like, they copy like like plays from back in exactly. the day. Exactly. It's like, how do you take something and make it your own? But I, I do feel like this movie, Taxi Driver, is like was definitely like a pioneer. Oh like yeah, a lot of the, yeah, a absolutely. Lot of the movies that you see now, and like yeah. again, it's about such a lonely guy, and it's this is very like content that well, I don't want to say content. Content's a bad word for this film. This is like a film that you don't typically like. I I feel like you wouldn't typically see in that time. Like people would be like when like I feel like when people like I guess regular people and people that are not in the arts or want to watch a movie like that like go into that film and almost feel the way betsy felt when she was in like the pornography film you know what i mean mm. like it could be very over the top mm-hmm. like and for us it's very normal now because nowadays like, everything yeah. has blood in it we've everything seen tarantino has, movies <laughs> yeah yeah i mean we've seen tarantino movies everything it, that's even normalized now you know yeah. back in the day it wasn't even people were like what the fuck you know what yeah. are you doing like that's too much and all yeah. this stuff and now it's like oh it's it's, Tarant- it's fine yeah tarantino uh, he likes a lot of violence. Cool. But I, I could definitely see people like maybe walking out of movie theaters. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I have heard that before, but I'm not sure. But but it was it was a movie that it's not supposed to it's not um, catering to anybody. No. You know what I mean? It's like this is my movie. Yeah. Unapologetically putting it out. Yeah. And this is what I think good cinema is. Yeah. And God damn it. It's fucking great. Yeah. Um, it's really fucking good. God. Oh, the beginning, too. Like I know it's just titles, uh-huh. um, but it's a good it's a good way to set the scene. It's such a good way, like the moodiness, the yeah. way the camera. What do they do with that camera? Like they, they it takes like less. Fr- what is it called? It's like less frames per second. Yeah, they rather, just slow down the frame rate. They just slow down those. Okay, there you, there you go. They slow down the frame rate so like you can see everything kind of blurry in, mm-hmm. like, and then very moody, raining always in New York and. That's just great. And I do love the way he started the film, too. Like, he started when he was trying to find what to do with his life. Like, I just want to be a taxi driver. It's like, I just yeah. need, I can't sleep. I need the extra hours. Or, yeah. you know. So it's like, that's where his story started. Like, as a taxi driver. It's not like he was a taxi driver and we saw him in the middle of it. And this is what he's kind of going through. It's like a guy, a young guy that's trying to find his way through the world. It's like, I guess I should be a taxi driver. Because he has history. I mean, he was in, he was a veteran, right? Mm-hmm. Do you think that's real? He was a Marine, right? Yeah. Um, that is real, though, right? You think? Yeah. Yeah, I think so, too. Which is also kind of like, you know, you come from a, a, a place that you're being used, uh, not in a bad way, just like you're, you, you're being put to work. Mm-hmm. And you're, you're, given, you're given purpose. And then all of a sudden, like, you get dishonorably dis- honorably discharged, right? He got honorably discharged? I have no idea. I think he got honorably discharged. And or that's at least at least that's what he said. You know, he, yeah, who the know. fuck knows? Going the way this movie kind of went, it's, it, he could have gotten dishonorably yeah. discharged. But because he does lie a lot, he lied to his parents. He does lie a lot. Yeah, hard. But like, oh, I'm doing work for the government. And he kind of has to smirk when he says it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he probably got dishonorably discharged. Just yeah. to be honest. And you know, but like again, when you're when you have purpose in life, then all of a sudden that gets taken away. 
you're just like, well, what the fuck am I going to do now? You know, yeah. especially if you're lost, you know, you can't talk to your parents or you have no fucking friends or mm-hmm. nobody. You know, even that guy tried to give him a, like a conversation, you know, like or not a conversation, a advice. Thank yeah. You. Uh, I said, thank you. Like you told me what the fucking word was. Anyways, but he tried to give him advice. And I thought that was so, it's so real. Cause like, you know, a lot of, a lot of guys do go to older men and ask them for advice, but he was almost not, he wasn't blowing him off, but he did. He said, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I was like, Damn. no, no. I mean like the guy, the guy, the older guy, the one giving him the advice. Uh-huh. He wasn't blowing Travis off, like uh-huh. Robert De Niro off. He was trying to give him life, but but it just goes to show how much bullshit there is in the world because he didn't know either, and that's why he said it. He's all like, man, like, what the fuck do I know? I'm a taxi driver. Yeah. It's like, but but I love when it's like, you'll be all right, you'll be all right, because yeah. that that happens such like a lot. Like sometimes people aren't okay, and if yeah. you don't notice the signs of people not being okay, you do that. You're just like, oh, you'll be fine. You'll figure it out, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but like, you'll figure it out, right? You'll figure it out. Yeah. Figure it out. Yeah. And like, I thought that was so real to like, you know, and it's like it's a it's a man that needed help. Mm -hmm. A lot of help, and nobody gave it to him, or nobody gave a shit about it. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, he'll be fine. Like, he's like all of us. He'll be okay. But he wasn't, bro. One of us. One of us. us. No, yeah, and like it goes to show, like it, it, like really relates to like how like nowadays, every fucking day. Yesterday was a shooting at a high school here. Oh, was there? Yeah, in Irving. I didn't didn't know Arlington. I don't know which one. Goes to show, <laughs> you know? No, a hundred percent. It died at fucking eight o'clock in the morning. God damn. That's so sad. Some asshole with a gun. So it's just like, it's one of those things, you know, like it, it's very, and that's like very present nowadays. Yeah. Like whether it happened back in the day or not. Uh, and like, it's just like media trying to like, you know, sensationalize everything and like make everything look like it's worse than it was before or whatever. Either way, it's happening, and it's, like, in our minds constantly, Yeah, you know? And so, like, that kind of shit is just, like, like it's very relevant nowadays. Yeah, I mean, and that's exactly why I'm saying, like, I feel like this movie, like, is ahead of its time, mm-hmm. you know? Um, to write a character that way, or, I mean, did Scorsese write? I don't think Scorsese writes this, right? I think so. He did write it? Let's check. Um, before I start talking nonsense here. But you haven't started talking. No, he didn't write it. Paul Schrader wrote it. Paul Schrader. But regardless, to write a to pick up that script and be like, and find you know like this is there's something here wow. you know like, wow. there's something here you know and even the writer to write it you know like they I think they both captured what's what's very relevant today mm-hmm. you know and this was written in 70 or this was made in 76 so i think good artists always somehow in a weird way know the future mm-hmm. without even them realizing that they know the future or they just find a good way to make it timeless you know like what are yeah, the yeah, things yeah. that are not gonna change like whenever you make like there's a lot of movies that date themselves right like megan you know, like the one about the the robot toy or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like it's bad. Uh, things like we just covered this, and I really like this movie. But AI, artificial intelligence, was also one of those <laughs> things where it's like you tell me the future. We're still gonna listen to Dad Rock, and you know, like yeah. and like have like these very like I don't know like weird looking fucking robots and like all this other like they date themselves yeah just by like but what they include in technology and all that kind of yes, stuff. yes but like what i'm saying is like different because i i don't feel maybe maybe it did happen but it wasn't something super known about like a, a character like travis you know what i mean like there wasn't like i never really heard like i the only when like school shootings started all that stuff or like people just shooting in random places. Like it wasn't it like Columbine, and wasn't that like the early two thousands? Columbine, or was that in the eighties? Well, there was also the Oklahoma Unabomber and like all those other, all those other people. Oh, that is true. Before that, yeah, but I think those people were kind of like inspired, and I think maybe that that's what people like were getting out of it that it was gonna like inspire crime because a lot of people were inspired by like movies and shit like that. You think so? Or at least. I don't know. I, it's so it's such a weird conversation because like yeah, yeah, you can have somebody something that inspires you or that like 
that like makes you you trying to emulate right but like if your mind is already there yeah yeah you gotta look for anything to you know to inspire you to do that you know so like just like blaming it on on a movie it's not not gonna be fucking you know like for them to like ban the movie completely just because they're afraid of something of something yeah i see i see what you're saying i mean and joker recently came out too so it's not like joker is not super red i mean it's it's not the same movie, but it's again. Yeah. It's a lonely guy that's trying to find. You know, there's also a lot of lying in that movie in Joker. Uh, he lies to um, his mom. Lies to him, saying that. Do you remember that movie? Not not a lot. But honest. okay, well, his mom lies to him, saying that Thomas Wayne is his father, and he's like, "You're my father." And then uh-huh. he's like, no, "I'm not your father." He finally sees him, he's like, "I'm not your father." She, your mom's fucking crazy, and that's how we basically let her go. Uh-huh. Um, and then he realizes how fucked up the world is and how fucked up his mom is and how yeah. fucked up he is. And and so even, I mean, even now, movies are, even as, as crazy as Taxi Driver is, I mean, people are still putting out similar films, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, they've not even worse, because Joker probably is worse, I guess? In I wouldn't think so. Right? Yeah, not like that it's, crazier or, i mean it is crazier but you know what i mean right like i mean yeah, he kills those guys jo- on the subway the jo- and the joker didn't really seem like like this guy like dived into psychosis like i i feel like the the joker was more like him figuring out a lot of shit and almost like stumbling into psychosis you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it wasn't. It didn't seem like it was. Oh, sounds weird. It didn't seem like it was his fault. You know <laughs> that that he let yeah, yeah, all this shit happen to him. But like, but it's also the same thing with this character. You don't think so? Not really. No. Why not? Because he is unaware and he is like weird like that. And like he had a chance with a girl and then like took her to a porno film. Like that's weird, dude. Like, no, a hundred percent is weird. But it's but I I don't I think again like I said in the beginning I think he's naive. And I don't think he know like, but then he goes out to seek weapons and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. The Joker did it, but like, with the Joker, like he was attacked, you know, and yeah. like he was like the victim of a lot of shit, and it didn't seem like he was a victim in a lot of shit. Like he, it seemed like he was just like, like man. Well, he his lonely filth, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think he was trying to be the cool guy, which is different from the Joker. Um. Because I think his idea of people talking to him was trying to be cool. And he always thought he was cool, but he never was, you yeah. know? And that's why when he goes to sport, Sporty, what is, it, what is his real name? Uh, you oh, know that. Sport, the, yeah. The, oh, it's just Sport, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, he had another name too, like whatever. Yeah. Because Jody just called him Sport. But yeah. him, remember, he like laughed at him. He's like, oh, so you're a real cowboy, huh? Uh-huh. And like, I know Travis thought he was—he looked cool that day. Yeah. Like I, that's why he did that. Fuck it. that the typical De Niro fucking uh-huh. look where he's just, you yeah. know. And so I don't know. I just I don't think, I don't think he knew what he was doing. Um, oh, I don't think so. I think he was just crazy. No, I think like, he was. But like, what I'm—I guess what I'm trying to say is like, I don't necessarily believe that he took her to that movie because he thought it was. Uh, I didn't think so either. You know, okay, okay. No, no, no. Like, I, what, what I'm saying is, like, he then, like, seeked out all this, like, violence and, and shit. Like, he wanted yeah, for somebody to fuck around and find out, you know? Yeah. And, like, he, like, wrote letters and all this other stuff. With the Joker, he wasn't even trying to make it a message, I don't think. You know? Like, he, like, he did something... Yeah. And then everybody else blew it out of proportion. Everybody was like, yeah, fuck everybody, you know? Yeah. And then he just kind of, like, stumbled upon it. But I don't think that was his intentions at all. From the yeah, day. like, he got pushed to the breakup. Yeah, I get that, but also, but I also think that's also true for Travis. So even though other people didn't cause it in the same way, mm-hmm. I still think people caused it. Because, like, he is a weird dude, and he probably got a lot of rejection. And, you know, once you get a lot of rejection that way, I mean, it breaks you as a person, and you're trying to find ways to you know be part of society mm-hmm. but you're just you just don't know how to incorporate yourself in society yeah. and so like that loneliness could really put you somewhere in a weird place you know and that's yeah. i mean i guess that's the issue with like a lot of things that are happening now yeah. you know it's like people 
people are just mean. But yeah. that that's always but been I would the see, thing, you know? I would see I would see Taxi Driver as worse for society than Joker would because Joker seems like it's just something that is very hard to emulate. You know what I mean? Like it's very hard to like do what Joker was supposed to do and like Yeah, I see what you're saying. You know? Interesting. Like that's Interesting bad. topics, but yeah. But fucking great movie. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a, it's a, what a great movie it is, to be quite honest with you. I love. It reminds me a lot of Leo the Professional, actually. It's such a good movie, too. Yeah. Well, it, it, the Not stars, the characters. Yeah, but just but the way just it's like shot and stuff style. like that. It's style, yeah. You know? I, I, don't, I don't love that movie. And he was a hero. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yo, what a, have got, I watched that movie once, too, and I, yeah. I have to we need watch, watch it again. again. We'll watch it again, yeah. Which, you know what's crazy? So I wanted to do this movie because. I want to do something different. Like, I. It's gonna be quirky. <laughs> Hold on. That's that's the thing, though. Like, I was like, I want to do something different. Like, something like, because, like, the last couple times it's been very sad, lonely, depressing films. I was like, oh, do Taxi Driver. And I was, as I was watching Taxi Driver, I was like, what the fuck? No. Bro. I was like, do I just gravitate towards these films? Yes, you do. It's crazy, but you, you it's do. different. It's not necessarily. Yes, I totally do. It's different. It's not necessarily. Um, in that same like a like people relationships and stuff like that, this is definitely more of an isolated incident of like what he's going through. But still, it's it's kind of in the same yeah. in that same realm, right? And I was like, "Fuck!" I was like, and I was yeah. just I was really. What is your favorite happy movie? My favorite happy movie. Um, the before trilogies did not count because they ended up sad. They ended up sad. Kind of. They separated. They wasn't. They like, got divorced. Exactly. Yes. Are you sure? Yeah. Right, we'll man. watch them. We'll watch them. We'll watch them again. That's that's that, that doesn't count. What What is your favorite happy movie? I'm I'm really trying to think. Uh, Her did not end happy. Her did not end happy. No. Oh, I was gonna tell you about that. Did you see in Taxi Driver? There's a shot, and he's in the street, and the, you get that weird sound. And I wonder if Her was inspired by that shot. Oh no! I didn't know. I'll show it to you later. It has that same sound that they use like in the her movie, like that kind of thing. Yeah. You didn't catch it? No. When and it's like shot in the same way, not in the same way, but like it's it's a medium shot. And he's kind of like yeah. into with people, and it reminded me of when um, what's Joaquin Phoenix's name in that movie? The- Theodore. 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 I can't believe I forgot that. Um, I was thinking Teddy because of the camera, but yeah, Theodore. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, it reminded me of like Theodore walking uh, in the street and not being noticed, and it had the same sound, like similar sound. Okay. Sure. And I was like, I remember. I'll show it to you, but I was like, oh my god! I immediately thought her. I was like, that's crazy. I'm like, I wonder if it was influenced because like yeah. that shot is like her the whole movie. Yeah. You know. So, anyways, but back to my favorite happy movie. I mean, I'm trying to, th- I'm trying to really think, because my some of my favorite. Much. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Cha Cha Rose, was Cha Cha Rose really happy? Did it end happy? There was growth. I love Cha Cha Real Smooth. Do you like La La Land? La La Land's good. It's not my favorite movie, but I like it a lot. But it's not like I love it. I'm trying to look at my wall. It's also sad, though. It doesn't end. Wait, is La La Land on your wall? Are you serious? Because of Kim. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, we have three and three. Ah, okay. I thought these are your movies. No, no, no. But, okay, it makes sense. But, and it was like recency bias because we had just watched it. I was gonna say, I was but like, she, like, she told me recently she was like, "I want to take La La Land off," and I was like, "It's a good movie." And I was, it's a, no, was it's like, a, yeah, but it's on the one of the heroes. It's it, but it's it's a it's a very sad movie though. It is, yeah. How's that? So why'd you ask me if I watched La La Land? <laughs> no, because yeah, like there's a lot of movies that like seem happy, but then they end up sad. Yeah, like her is one of those. Yeah, kind of like oh he falls in love and it's up sad. Oh, and oh, they're in love. Oh, ends up sad. Ends like, up sad. A, most movies are like that, and yeah. so. Yeah. Well, I'm really. I don't know. Uh, you have to get me. You have to get back to me on that. I know. I think Cha Cha Rose smooth. It doesn't. End, it doesn't end sad. I mean, he doesn't stay with the girl. No, but. But he, he gets grow. his life together. Remember, but like the movie doesn't end the way you want it to end. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it's not a happy. God, it doesn't mean it's not a happy movie. But you don't end up. You don't leave the movie like, ha. Huh. I'm so glad, <laughs> you know. But you are happy for him, though. Kind of, because but like, you don't know. It's a lot of mystery. It's a lot of like, what's gonna happen to him? Okay, well, well, that's not a sad movie either. So it's just in between, or what? No, I feel like it's more sad than happy. It's more sad because like, I mean, it is more sad than happy, but it does. Well, not happy. the whole point of the movie, but like, 
his main goal, I guess, to be with her, didn't end up happening. But then he found like a loop, like a like a like a little uh uh what is it called? Something loop? Damn. Loophole. Loophole, yeah. So you you found a loophole to being happy. And be like, oh, you know what? I grew from this. And you know what? Yeah. I'm gonna live I, my life. I'm, I mean, I'm really trying to think. I'm trying to think. Happy. <laughs> Call, I was like, calling by your name didn't end happy either. No. It does end happy, though, in the second book. Technically. Okay. Not out yet. <laughs> it's probably not going to be out with the whole Army Hammer thing. But, uh-huh. uh, man, poor Marcia. <laughs> yeah. I love Marcia. I don't know. I mean, what other movies have we watched that could possibly be happy that I could possibly think to? Like, to me, About Time was a happy movie. And that's one of my favorite movies. But his dad died. Yeah. And he but he does get again. the girl. You know? I know, but his dad died and he couldn't see him again. And a big part of the movie was him being able to time travel and, like, take advice from his dad. Yeah. Don't come at me, last, But they had one last thing. You know what I mean? Yes, but also, but that same thing with Cha-Cha Real Smooth, though. Like, you know, just because he didn't stay with the girl doesn't mean to say he didn't end happy. Yeah. <laughs> but I, yeah. I mean, I don't know. If there's another movie out there that that's super, super happy, I guess. Oh, Midsummer ended up happy. Oh, you know. Midsummer, they die. They all die. But she lives. And she's the queen. Except that irritable guy. What's his fucking name? I got it. That really irritable, the guy that has such a hateable face. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, the one that invited them? Uh, maybe. I don't know. He's like the friend. Oh, the redhead guy. He's the guy that has just a punchable face. I, yeah, the red haired guy, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. He's playing. He ended up. A, he ended up being a clown in the thing. Oh, did he? They like cut him open. Like he I need to. Ooh, I need to re- revisit that movie. I'm fucking not, trip. Dude, I know that cry though at the beginning. <laughs> it's like fucking dumb. That was a good cry. Yeah, it's such a good cry. Any other parts? Fifty-nine minutes. You want to? You want to move on to ratings? Well, if uh, any any last things you want to talk about, I have nothing else to talk. You have about. nothing else. This thing is a great movie. It's a great movie. It's a great. Okay, move on to ratings. Awesome. So, let's talk about story. Story. Story for me, it's like a four. Mm, yeah. It's not like my favorite story, but it's like yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a very like timeless story. Yeah, that's what. That's what. That's what. I'm between a four and a five. Because okay. it's so well done. Yeah, it's very well done. Yeah. It's very well done film, or I guess the story is. It's intriguing. It's not the most well, okay for. I agree because it's not relatable. Yeah, you know that's what I was gonna say. Um, like, I'm not. It's not relatable. It's so well done though, but it's not relatable. Yeah, uh, you can't most people attach yourself to it. Yeah, you can't. You can't really feel bad for him either. You feel bad for him in certain aspects, uh-huh. right? But he kind of shoots himself in the foot. But you could also understand, like, well, in the sense of like. Again, I just think about like that when he takes it to the movie, uh-huh. and it's just like I don't even think he really knew how bad that was, no. you know. And that's what's sad about it, you know. Yeah. But she's just like, bro, like you should know that, but he doesn't. Yeah. So that's I'm just like, but at the end of the day, four. I think four is good. Yeah, four is good. Uh, and then we have beauty, the beautifulness. I want to say a, I want to say a five, man. Why? Because it it kept in that it had that feel to it, you know what I mean, like no. the ending, like the ending shot you had, like it had a. How do I explain? Oh. I think it should be high. I don't think it's it's on high think, though. Yeah, like there were some shots that were like really fucking good. I know, but I'm also thinking of like just the way the movie looked, and you know, since the, from the very there, beginning, there were some times where like where like he's like they're like panning across, and uh, you see him. Yeah. And then, like, it shoots up and he has a mohawk now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, love that. <laughs> I love that. Because I just know that Martin's like, yeah. wouldn't it be funny if he just did this? He, like, and revealed it. Bring it up. And then, of course, Robert De Niro, just iconic actor, just like, fucking, you know? Yeah. It's like, God damn, that was yeah. so good. No, but he's also like, uh, I guess the way he also, like, when he was at the, oh my God, what is it? Like, the diner or whatever with his okay. friends when he got to the, ta- the other taxi drivers. Like it was shot this way, and you could see the three, the three guys, uh-huh. and then Robert De Niro came in, sat, and then he pan. Like I think he opened it up more, and then he panned over this way, yeah. and it was it was kind of cool to watch. But he did cut off this guy yeah. because he wanted to give a little bit. He's really good at that. He's yeah. really good at making it subtle too. Yeah, he wanted you to know? give more space to mm-hmm. to Robert. Yeah, um, or to to Bob. 
He likes to go out. To Bobby. I don't know him that well, so I'm just going to call him De Niro. I'm going to um, call him Bobby. <laughs> Bo- Bobby. Mr. Bobby. <laughs> Mr. Bobby, sir. Uh, um, but yeah, I, I would say I will, I will stick with a four for that one. A four? Because uh, it, didn't, it didn't stand out to me, but it was very well. It didn't stand out to you? Wow. I just No, think... the cinematography didn't stand out to me, to, to be honest. For me, it did. Hmm. For me, it did. Um, it wasn't like, I wouldn't go as far as, I guess, Joker mm-hmm. or, you know, uh, fucking, you know, what's the name of that fucking film? The, uh, oh, Blade Runner 2040. 2048. 2048. Mm-hmm. That's not Blade Runner 2048. It is. It is. Not right. Um, isn't it 2049? No. Ah. Right? 2049? <laughs> Blade Runner 2049. Mother... F- I'm always a year behind, bro. I'm so I know. T- that's how I was like. I'm so 2000 and late, bro. You're, yeah, I know. Uh, uh, so it's obviously not that. But no. just because it's not that. Because that's like the highest five you could get. Yeah. So, But like there's there's like things like that you can do uh, in a movie. Like we're going to talk about this. But everything, everywhere, all at once. Okay, yeah. You have circles everywhere. But right? that's still focus on this. Oh, I see what you're saying. So like it's like things like that that like. Yeah. You go out of your way to make something that tells a story of its own. I see what you're saying. You know? Okay, I and he does do that. He does do yeah. that, but like to the like just like a well done level. Like, okay, you did it, you opened up whenever he got up because he was opening up. Makes sense, that's cool, whatever. You get your heaven shot, dope, the streets are clean whenever he dies or whatever. Yeah cool you know like all those things are like above the average movie but to me it doesn't take that that extra step of like like your cinematography tells a story of its own okay i see what you're saying all right i'll I'll take it down to four you don't have to i just no no but i think i think it's hard because like it is it's like a high four to me but like a low five you know what i mean okay and like that's how i was like i think i'll take it like a (laughs) 4.5 i mean i don't like giving half numbers but I'll give it a four. I'll give it a four. Okay. All right. Uh, then you got sound. Sound. Uh, I give it a three. A three. I was gonna give it a four. <laughs> wow. Okay. I really like the the consistency and like the calm music when shit's just going down. Yeah, you I know? see what you're saying. To me, it was a little bit repetitive. It is repetitive, but that's how movies were back in the day. I know, but that's still for me, kind of. You, you know, you're right. I'm gonna give it a three. Yeah, because like there's. There's certain, I mean, a lot of movies, like Joker, Joker has that same, that, that sound, you, you hear it, yeah. her has that sound, yeah. but they, I feel like, well, more in her, they change it up more. Yeah, like you're in, right. Yeah. In Joker. They use it uh, sparingly too. Like exactly. Joker, like when, when he's going through something, when he's in that, that, you know, that music, when he's in the, um, God, what's the name of that? When he's in, when he's in the bathroom and he's dancing by himself and he's mm-hmm. like doing all this yeah. stuff. That sound. Uh-huh. That's like the Joker sound. Yeah. And it is in the movie and it's and it's very it's put in a lot in the movie, but it 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 wasn't repetitive for me. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. And this one was. I I I can't really pinpoint why it was I repetitive. Can, I can, no, I can see it. But it was a little it. bit like I don't want to say annoying, but kind of annoying. Yeah. So I was like, mm, okay. But like I understand what he was doing and like it was good what he was doing. And it yeah. did like calming, you know, in certain yeah. scenes. Then you know he had that same like when Travis would come out of be alone or was thinking of doing something like that sound would come uh-huh. up, and so I thought it was well I remember it is the thing and I know uh-huh. I recently literally just watched it but it was very tight to the movie mm-hmm. and so I, that's why I give it a three. Okay, I'm yeah. gonna give it a three too. Three. I, think, I think you're right. Okay. Then you have your balance. Balance. Five, right? It's a five. That's yeah. a five. Yeah, I mean it's really yeah. it's it's. It's very well balanced. Both. Very well done. Yeah. Very well balanced. Everything was great. Acting, the acting was great. Blocking. Ah, the acting was great. Yeah. Yeah. Even he was just given like he's so his, like fake uh, name and address as the security guy, and he just kept like looking around. <laughs> you know. Oh, with the, uh, the secret, secret service, service guy. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's even that was like, like really good. It was just like six five four three two whatever. Well, that's when he started wearing Strategic. the glasses. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, of, and then he thought like, "Oh, just uh, take away the five or whatever." He's yeah, like, take away the. Two, I was thinking of my, I was thinking of my number. Yeah, and it's like, 
your number cannot resemble no. the zip code. Yeah. I just know it. So yeah. it was. He's so weird, and that's when he started wearing the um the the, the glasses. I think. Yeah. Because he copied it from that. Again, he's trying to be cool, yeah. you know. But just to speak out, because he is probably the best actor to ever live, like Robert De Niro. Yeah. Like. I it's between him and like for me for me it's between him and Martin Brando because Martin okay. Brando is fucking amazing as well. Uh-huh. Um, but you know he, this he could have if if you had cast another actor, maybe a less experienced actor or an actor that I don't know just any less experienced then. No, that's the thing. That's what I was trying, that's why I was like maybe just another actor that you know. Uh huh. Um, because I don't know how experienced he was, but. To me, it's just, man, like, you could easily take that role to such a crazy person, and he didn't. Yeah. He grounded him so well, and he kept him from being that stereotypical guy. Yeah. You know? And again, still stereotypical in the sense of, like, now we could pick up those, but they're subtle. They're subtle things that you're not, a normal person would not pick up. Mm -hmm. Like, it has to be something that's really paying attention. And you're like, oh, I have seen that guy. It's like, oh, I better watch out for that guy now. You know, he's so subtle with it and understanding what that character is and who that character was. It's just like, at no point, because it's it's hard to like even like, because you do feel bad for him in certain times, but not necessarily. Uh huh. But I feel like if he was super crazy here or there, like you wouldn't even feel bad for him. Like, oh, fuck this guy. Yeah, he's just fucking nuts. But no, he never took it to that point. He grounded him to that level where it's just like, God, like he's such a real person. You know, yeah. So, I just really want to say that about the acting because God, he's he's such an amazing actor, and he's also amazing in Awakenings. But in Taxi Driver, he's he is some special as well. But I'm trying to see how experienced he was by the time he did that movie. Mm-hmm. There was one movie that at least that he did before this. Oh no, there were a couple of movies. None of them that are that I've heard of before. Name me some. Oh, this is like Mean Streets, The Godfather Part Two. Oh, <laughs> you know what? I've never heard of that one. Godfather Part Two was probably like his first big. You know, he was in that movie Twenty Minutes. Oh, really? Twenty Minutes and won the Oscar. Born to Win. What a G. What a G, bro. So yeah, uh, The Godfather Part Two came out two years before Taxi Driver, but I'm assuming like that's kind of like what launched his career, right? Like to another fucking level, Tax, uh, Godfather. Yeah. Um, well, that and then like two years afterward, coming coming out. But with that's Taxi the thing. Driver. Like, I think it put him on the map for other people to see him, but, but the fact that he is such a great actor mm-hmm. is what really like, because you think about he auditioned for the role of Sonny. Do you remember the Godfather? Mm-hmm. He auditioned for the role of Sonny. Yeah. Which is the son of Martin Brando in the movie. Yeah. And that guy didn't have the career that De Niro had. And that's a bigger role, and he didn't get that role. He got, and he remember he played uh, Don Vito Corleone in his 20s or something like that, Mm -hmm. or his 30s. So he played the same role Martin Brando did in a younger. So he only only spoke Italian at that time. And so, like, oh, that's another thing. He went, Robert De Niro, he didn't say a lick of of English in that that film. Oh, wait, but he knew English. What? No, yes. Yes, he knew English. Sorry, sorry, yes. The yeah. character, the character. I thought, I thought he was like Italian. I was like, no, excuse me. <laughs> so, no, the character in the movie, uh, Don, uh, what Don Vito friend? Corleone. Is he what? American? De Niro? Uh-huh. Yeah, he is American, but he obviously being from New York, he's, I don't know. I think, he, I, I don't remember, I don't know if he's Italian, but he's, he may be Jewish or something. I don't know. You're going to be sad when he dies, though. Huh? You're going to be sad when he dies. I'm not going to be like crazy sad. I know he's old. I'm not going to be crazy sad, but, like, that's one of the actors that, like, God, I wish I would have, like, just gotten to, like, work with him. He's 80 years old. He's 80, yeah. So is uh, Pacino's, like, 82 or something like that, I think. He is American. Yeah. He was born in New York City. New York. New York. No, he is American. I just don't know, like, where he, like, yeah. his family's from. He may be Italian, though. Stop. I don't remember. Anyways, but I just, for me... He's so good at what he does, you know? Yeah. And, like, going back to that, he was in that film. He didn't speak English at all in that film. He learned the actual dialect to speak. Like, he spoke Italian, and then he learned the dialect, the exact how to form his mouth to, to him not have an accent uh-huh. in Italian. And one... 
it's crazy and it's like the amount of work that he did for those 20 minutes is like crazy and again it's just like you're like oh, well why didn't he get sunny and he had a gr- have you seen his audition for sunny no phenomenal yeah but didn't get the role i wonder why i don't know maybe maybe he just had too much Maybe they were looking for a tougher guy. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Somebody that's more, I don't know. And yeah, I don't know. He I stole the scene so much. That's the thing, too, you know? And, like, that's, as an actor, uh, you know, my I had a talk with my agent and remember that. Yeah, thing I, was, I, I was just thinking thing. about that. Yeah, it's just, like, for me, sometimes you, I think you can miss out on roles. Because you're too. Because you're too. Uh, you you you're, steal the show a little bit, you know? You steal the show a little bit. And, like, I'm not saying I'm the greatest actor, but sometimes I put choices in there. Yeah, me neither, but... <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, that's not what I said. No, I'm not... What, what I'm saying is like, I'm not, like, the best actor out of these people that audition. Uh-huh. Um, in some cases, I may be. But in uh-huh. some, in other cases, probably not. Most likely not. But what I'm saying is, like, yeah, like, I, I never think of the big picture. I think of, like, what am I doing? Uh-huh. And what could I do to this character to make him... The best version of this. The character. best version of this character, and yeah. give him that right sense. But I, again, it's like I told you before, so why, like, I don't feel like I'd be good at directing because I don't look at the big picture. Uh-huh. I don't. I look at the details. Uh-huh. So not everybody could be the main guy, and not that I'm trying to be the main guy, but if I'm making choices that are gonna steal the thunder of the protagonist of the show or mm-hmm. whatever, and I don't know I'm doing them, then they're not gonna cast me because they're just like, oh, I love this person, yeah. but he doesn't fit our cast. And yeah. that's something I never think about as an actor because I'm yeah. always trying to give... Are you more present about doing that now? I mean, it only happened like a month ago. Or... Exactly. So are you going to be like more... Like whenever you do a reading, are you um, still going to do... You know, I just had a reading. Doing it? I just had a reading. Take this new approach. <sighs> it's, it's hard because I just I did have just a reading for this show. And... How do you even know? Like they tell you this is a protagonist, this is a side character. Well, they tell you what you're auditioning for. I know, but like they tell you, like how do they give you a clue as to like how much you should be doing for this character? They tell you, they give you a breakdown. Um, I could show you later too. Okay. Uh, they give you a breakdown of the character and who the character is, and you know he's a supporting role because either they put co-star, or guest star on there. Uh-huh. Um, if you're ever auditioning for a main lead, they'll they'll put lead on there. Mm. Um, but you don't know how big, I mean, it's, this one was a guest star, so it's probably a a pretty big role and also like a recurring role. Yeah. That's also another thing that they do because they could do a guest star and it just be one episode. Uh Uh-huh. So you can have a big role in that episode, but not never come out again because you're going to die or, or you just had a big. They cut off your tongue and then you. They cut off your tongue. Yeah. Uh, but they will put recurring on there. Mm -hmm. So recurring means that obviously, you know, you're going to come up in a, in a few episodes, so. But, yeah, they don't necessarily tell you. I mean, it's just like you just don't know the vision. And, yeah. like, that's the hardest thing yeah. as an actor, you know? Like you don't know the person. They first... can't give it away either. No, they can't. Yeah. No, but they don't even, a lot of the times, not that they don't know either, but, like, it's just something that until they get on set, yeah, you know? Yeah, you don't really know. They don't really 100% no. know. So it's just like, or maybe it is in their head, it's like what they want the cast to look like, you know? Uh-huh. But, again, it. Because, like, even for your character in Queen, yeah, they had the idea of, like, from the beginning, they're going to kill you off, right? But they had the idea of, like, shit, maybe we don't kill them off. You know, maybe we... They maybe did, we, yeah. The writer did tell me that. He's like, you know, we're thinking of maybe not killing you off. And I was super excited. And then and then they did kill me off. And then, that's fine. Because they had wrote it out already. Yeah. Like, cutting my tongue and all that stuff. And then the writer was like... um, He's like, you know, we're thinking of, like, in season three, having you back. Uh-huh. And, like, yes. Because we we're actually... That day, he told me they were cutting off my tongue. So we were already shooting all that stuff. Uh-huh. And um, he's like, but, like, have you under, like, this, the colonel's, um, like, in this bunker, and he just keeps you there. And it's mm-hmm. just like, like you, you know, you're there, but, like, yeah, I mean, I can't really, I guess, speak or anything. But it would have been cool to yeah. just do that, but. Like, you wouldn't have to learn any lines. They didn't have to learn any <laughs> lines, but, yeah, they didn't, they didn't have me back. So I was like, hey, but I was grateful for what, what they did have me for. But, yeah. um, but anyways, yeah, so it's, it's, it's difficult, but yeah, those things could happen, yeah. and especially when you're auditioning. It's just like to, to take the thunder from somebody else and like, cause to be able to put a cast together is also, a, it's somebody's job Yeah, and it has to blend. You know, you can't pick the best, you may not be able to pick the best actor for each role yeah. because they may not blend with this they person. Might compete with each other. And that's something that's very hard for me to do, uh, to just make a different choice. That's not as uh-huh. maybe for me as strong as this choice would be. Interessant. Interessant. So rewatchability. 
Wait, so balance five, right? We both get yeah, yeah, five, five, five. Ability. Five is good. Uh, rewatchability. Rewatchability. I say a five two though. Like, I think it's it's not a movie you're gonna watch all the time, but like, yeah. it's it's definitely a movie that, again, I always think about. Would I be excited to watch the movie again? Yes, I think I would. I would give it a four because it's not my type of movie. That I know, I but watch. like, if I try to be unbiased about it, is what I'm saying. Is that what we're supposed to do? That's what I always do. You know what I mean? Because like, like about time, I think I did that as well. And like, uh-huh. last movie, what, what did we just, what did we do yesterday? Drive my car. Drive my car. You know, um, I try to be. No, what was the movie we did before that? AI. Maybe that's what it was. I don't know. There was a movie um, that was just like, okay, well, like, how rewatchable is the movie, you know? Um, and, like, even though it's not something that, for me, it's like, I'll rewatch it all the time. Yeah. Uh, because maybe the character wasn't as relatable as another movie, that like, uh-huh. Cha-Cha Rose movie or something like that. Um, I do like the film a lot. And I, I think like it's... Too, and I want to watch it again, but I wouldn't watch it again in the next, like, month or two. You know oh, I'm I mean? the same way, but I but there's no movie, not even her, I'd watch in this in the same way. Oh, oh no, I watched Such a Real Smooth right after I watched it. Yeah, okay. I know, but you also wanted to show Kim, which is different. Like, would you? Yeah, have but it? I also wanted to watch it again for myself. But would you have watched it again if you? I think so. You think so? I think so. Okay, I mean that makes sense. I I'm not that type of like no matter what movie you put in front of me, I don't want to watch it again. Yeah. Like. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. No matter. Yeah. For I'm not that type of movie watcher. I don't. I don't like rewatching movies. Uh-huh. I've told you that before. Yeah. Um. And that's I why love I try to watch movies. Yeah. It's not. That's not. It's not my thing. Like I, like I'll rewatch a movie if I forget about. Like this movie was great to rewatch because I was like oh, I totally forgot like yeah. things that happened. In the oh movie. no. I'm I'm the opposite. I'm, I want to go back now that I know what the ending is. Like mm-hmm. I want to I want to go back and like see what the hints were, and yeah, like any that. like puzzle pieces that I might have missed. Yeah. But it, to like it, put it together. You yeah, know. that makes sense. And and again, it makes I feel like that's more of because you are geared more towards like movie making. Yeah. And I'm more in like a performance. Like once you watch a performance, you could uh, there's not as much subtleties as as in movie making. Cause yeah, movie I making they, they tie things together, yeah. they put something here to like foreshadow this or like this cause. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like things yeah, happen. Yeah, Kim Kim is not like that either. Like, yeah. whenever we watch a movie and, like, I'll watch it again, and she'll be like, you just watched it. And I'll be like, yeah, what's your point? Yeah, you I know? don't I don't like that because I already know what's happening and, like, yeah. stuff like that. Just, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. It's just, like, even her, like, that's my favorite movie of all time. Like, I won't rewatch it. Like Also, see, but, like, then, see, like, then I wouldn't put it as high as rewatchability because, like, I do want to go watch it again, but, like, not be, not... Not because, like, I would just turn it on or, you know, as an audience member... They, I feel like somebody would just turn it on and be like, oh, yeah, I want to watch that movie. But I want to watch it again just because I want to catch those things. Like, I get that, but I just feel like that's your very personal. I mean, maybe you are. You just, it is very just, personal. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That like, now just, that brings it even a little bit lower for me because like, I would have okay. watched it to catch all these things. But like, if you're just talking about like a, a perspective of an audience member, then I wouldn't have watched it. Like, if I had no interest in like, catching those things, I wouldn't really care. No, but like, okay, well, maybe we see the category different. Because I always watch it. I see that how we're watching boys this movie. Like, it's not. And that guy always bring the examples again, like a heist movie or a mystery movie. Like, those are unrewatchable because, like, the exciting thing is to watch it unfold. Uh-huh. But once it's unfolded, you're like, oh, okay, well, I already know what's going to happen, kind yeah. of a thing. But this movie to me is like, well, it doesn't matter what happens. Like, the exciting thing is to watch the journey of what he goes yeah. through and stuff like that. And, like, yeah. I'm not in it for all that stuff, but uh, for, like, picking up things that happen in the beginning that may have caused something else, you know, like that's where we obviously differ, but it's a rewatchable movie in the sense of like, for me, it's like, I, I wouldn't get bored of it or, or I wouldn't be like, Oh my God, I, I dread watching this movie again. Like, why the fuck am I watching this movie again? Mm-hmm. Like, um, so I think about it in those terms. Yeah. It's like, okay, why well, would I be bored? Would I be uninterested? Would I be like, Oh, I already saw this. Like this happened, you know, like I don't have a desire to watch it again, but that's with all my movies. Like even yeah. the best, best of movies that I per- personal, right. Personal movies, because obviously, you know, a lot of people say Taxi Driver is better than her, but for me, her is the favorite movie. Mm-hmm. But even that movie, I won't watch. You know, once I watch it, like, I probably won't watch. Like, I the last time I watched her, probably over two, two three years ago. Uh-huh. And I haven't watched since. Yeah. Um, 
And I'll watch it again eventually, but I think I'm, I, in your lifetime, how much have you watched her? Like, how many times do you think? Uh, three or four times. Three or four times. I think, I'm, I think I've only watched it three or four times as well. Uh-huh. And, but yeah, I just, even with Cha-Cha Real Smooth, it's just like, I watched Cha-Cha Real Smooth and I was like, I didn't have the desire. I, I never have the desire to watch the movie again, you know, so. Yeah. But anyway, uh, for me. I'm going to give it a 3.5. I get that. I, I, I think I'll give it a five. Okay. Still. Um, because it's that type of movie where like it doesn't matter how many times we watch it. Um, watching it is exciting. Okay. To, like them go through that journey for me. But anyways. Okay. Uh, okay, and then just just something about just something about it. For me, it's a five. A five. I do think like after even talking to you about it and like how it influenced like Joker and like yeah all these other movies. I think it brought up a little bit more, and seeing a young Jodie Foster, seeing a, a young Robert De Niro, <laughs> so weird, you know. So those are his best roles, though. When yeah. He was younger. Not that he. The thing is, like, he doesn't really take on crazy roles now. Yeah. And he's older, so they may not offer him too. Yeah. You know? no. So I understand. He's him. eighty years old. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. But and then like also like even the other characters like Sybil, what's her name? Sybil something. Uh, she played Betsy. Yeah, I don't know her name. Like, but like, she's very like American girl, you know, <laughs> like just like oh, ditzy and all this other stuff. Yeah. And so like, even like, she did like a great job, you know. So like, I, yeah, I she like, did, she did. So I, I think like, seeing all these people, I feel like it was just a an arrangement of talent that like I thought that was like really yeah really cool I, seeing a young you know in a young role. Yeah, yeah. That I can't remember that guy. That guy that's in the the guy that plays sport. Oh, yeah. He's also very famous. You know him, right? No, I don't. I don't think I do. He's in. I, don't I think, think I recognize him. He's in like all of Martin Scorsese's films, also. Like, okay. I think he was in The Irishman. Did you watch The Irishman? Yeah. He was in there too. I think. I don't remember The Irishman that much. Um, he was in, and I know you didn't watch this, but Goodfellas. Is The Irishman the one? It's with Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, and yeah, yeah, Joe I know who's in there. But like, okay. what is the story about? Is it about the the uh... Robert De Niro ends up killing Al Pacino at the end? Like the stories of, I can't. Remember. I think he's trying to like become a politician or something like that. That's what I was thinking. Okay, and so it's it's about like the, uh, the unions and all that kind of. Yeah, shit, yeah, right? yeah. Okay, then I, I am thinking of the right movie. And they're like they go to they're like in jail and shit. I think so. It's, they like age them, like they make them younger. Yeah, they in the oh, beginning yeah. it's like how it started. Yeah, that is pretty crazy. But, but you know, and I I do love that that Netflix. Martin Scorsese is always like, I want my movie in theaters. Yeah. But because he was so passionate about making his movie and like no other studio offered him the money uh-huh. to make the three hour movie or even let him make the three hour movie, he's like, I just go to Netflix. He's yeah. like, I'm happy Netflix allows me to do this. Didn't it go in theaters though? It did, it does, but it, so it so Netflix does a weird thing. Um and Netflix a lot of this is for like a week, right? They put it in theaters for a week or two so it could be nominated for Oscars because uh-huh. the requirement for Oscars it has to be in theaters. Yeah. But it they don't think it I think it was like only like in like selected Theaters like in LA. Do you think that's gonna change? What do you mean? That the Oscars gonna change that rule? Of it has to be in theaters? Because I feel like there's so much content like getting yeah. out there now from like Apple TV and you know Netflix and Hulu and everything. Yeah. Uh, I hope they do, but let's just be honest. Actually, no, I read. Not that I hope they do or don't. I don't care. It's just there's just not enough movies out there that are being produced for them to change the rule. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they could if they're make if they want a movie to be Oscar nominated, they could expend the money to put it in theaters. Yeah. That I feel sense. like they get a lot of like backlash from people going like this hurts the business. Like this is like nobody's gonna put the money to go out in theaters anymore. On Netflix? No, it's just like people like people in Hollywood. Like a lot, like it used to be that a lot of the money came from like box office, but like now it's just like everything is streaming, so you don't really get that. Yeah. I like for example, like if Iron Man, like I'm sorry, if Iron Man, Robert Downey Jr. got the same contract that he had for Iron Man, would he get like a percentage of the box office or whatever? Now, like I don't think that would be worth that much. Yeah. No, you but know? but it it just changes. Like you'd get a percentage of. Yeah, I know, I know, but like it's less transparent. Right? Yeah. Like, whenever you put a movie out on Netflix, how how are you going to track, like, how much you're going to get paid after the fact? Right? Yeah. Like, how are you going to track royalties and stuff like that? Or how are you going to track 
like how much box office there is because there isn't a box office. Everybody's a subscriber. Anybody with an account can can get it. Like maybe you can get something like oh, any new subscribers, you get money off of that, right? Yeah. But like otherwise, like it's it's kind of hard to like determine how much money I'm gonna get out of this movie. Whenever whenever you put a movie out on theater, every seat is a paid ticket, right? Yeah. So like it's easy to to get the money out of that. It's it is less in the sense of like you know you can have one account. And, like, you can put on Netflix right now and you and I can watch the film. Yeah. And you're paying the subscription or I'm paying the subscription. My brother's paying you. And then my sister's paying my sister's paying. <laughs> hey. hey, but I, I pay for HBO and I never buy HBO, which is more expensive. The Netflix? Oh, 100%. I feel like Netflix is getting fucking expensive. HBO, HBO has free. Oh, because you do AT and T. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I wanted to do that, but the $15 they're just going to add extra to do it for, on my plan. Mm. is what the price it's like the same it's the same thing they just say it's free but it, they they add it to it yeah because i don't have that plan yeah. like i have a lower plan that's like 50 dollars less but if i get the higher plan it's 50 dollars more it yeah. comes at the same price as the hbo would be yeah, yeah. so it just gets too complicated because i'm still on my parents plan and it's, it's never get off the fuck no i know but like what i'm saying is like they're the ones i mean i i paid on the app but it just the, uh, it's just I get it. I get the money. It. I get you know what? I'll just keep it separate. I'll pay yeah. for it rather than the bill go up because they don't see it as, you know. But anyways, um, and I also don't want to call AT&T to be all, do all that shit, to be honest. It's the worst. It, I know it's the worst. That's why I hate it. Um, Anyways, but I give it an eight. An eight. Okay. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, an eight. Okay. I can see, because, yeah, you really like this movie. I do really like this movie. I really like this movie, too. It's not one of my favorite movies, I'd say. Like, it's not one of my favorite movies by any means. Uh, But I like a lot of things that they did in this movie. And, like, just for the simple... I I think when I was watching, I was like, I think I could attend. But now, thinking back at it, letting it simmer a little bit, I think maybe it's good. Because, again, it does... Like, there's a reason a lot of people, like, are drawn to this film Mm -hmm. and influenced toward this film, right? Because it's like, it did something in a time period that nobody really did any of that stuff, you know? And it's its own unique thing, like, and it's such a Martin Scorsese film, uh-huh. you know. It's like dirty and rigid and ugly and beautiful, mm-hmm. all at the same time. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I just think it, there's something very special about it. Um, so an eight, an eight for me. Cool. All well, right. That was taxi, taxi driver. driver. Hello, cab. Taxi. Cabs are here. Cabs are here. Cabs are here. So. Yeah, that was Taxi Driver. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you guys for tuning in. Bye. Oh, wait, what's next week? Oh, we haven't even done next week. Uh, It's your movie. Titanic. Titanic. Another three-hour fucking movie. That's not even Titanic. That's... <laughs> I'm waiting for the... Twilight. <laughs> oh, I, I, you know, I didn't recognize the music. I was like, what are you talking about? I can't every wait. Time, every time it gets gloomy... And like we like, I just tell Kim like, you know what kind of weather it is? Is that weather towards Twilight? But instead of saying that, I just go like, ha, ha. Twilight is such a bad movie. I, I know they're, <laughs> they're like, horrible. What do you mean? Like, a- have you seen Robert Pattinson talk about Twilight? No. It is funny. You should watch it. Oh, I. Nah, I'll show it to you. Oh, All right, okay. that's it. Bye. That's, 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 that's,